Republican governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, says he will not run for a third term in office. Baker won over the people in his state with his moderate politics. Now he's bowing out as dynamics change within the Massachusetts Republican Party. Former state representative Jeff Deal is hoping to take over Baker's soon-to-be-vacant seat. He worked on former President Donald Trump's campaign in Massachusetts and already received his endorsement. Governor Baker has firmly opposed Mr. Trump. Lisa Kaczynski joins me now. She is a reporter and author of the Massachusetts Playbook for Politico. Lisa, welcome. Thanks very much for being here. So when most people think about Massachusetts, they don't think necessarily about the Republican Party. How is it that Republicans have maintained such a long history in a typically blue state? Absolutely. You're exactly right. So Republicans have maintained this long line of power in the governor's office in Massachusetts because they put up these moderate candidates. There's this long line of moderate Republican governors who can kind of appeal across party lines in a state where Republicans currently have less than 10 percent of the voter share. So that is governors like Governor Charlie Baker, uh, Mitt Romney, who is now a sitting Utah senator, presidential, former presidential nominee, Bill Weld, uh, governors like that who have been able to kind of move forward and appeal to the electorate because of their managerial skills more so than their politics. And in the case of Mitt Romney and Charlie Baker, a little bit more of a business savvy than a politician's background. Well, how did Donald Trump's presidency change the Republican Party's prospects in the state? Donald Trump's presidency, of course, Massachusetts is not a state where you would expect Donald Trump to have a lot of influence or perform well, which he didn't in general elections here. But he really captured something and energized people in the Republican electorate here who had been sitting on the sidelines. Uh, it really, he was really able to get them involved in local Republican committees, in the state Republican committee. And he, by doing that, changed the calculus uh, for Republican primaries here in Massachusetts. Supporting him um, and, you know, what he stands for has now become a litmus test in Republican primaries here. And that's something that Governor Charlie Baker would have faced had he run for a third term. Yeah. And what do we know about that? Um, is there evidence or data to suggest that Governor Baker would have had a tough time in a GOP primary, given what you just laid out? There were a few polls. Um, some of them were done by Democratic-leaning firms, uh, so take them with a bit of a grain of salt, that did show that he would face significant headwinds in a Republican primary, at least, um, but that he still seemed to have the edge in a general election. And that sort of matched up anecdotally with what we had been feeling and hearing on the ground for a while in Massachusetts, talking to um, you know people on both sides of the Republican Party, uh, that he definitely could have faced some headwinds uh, in this primary. You know, he had stood for so long as this moderate firewall um, to President Trump. You know, they had battled uh, on Twitter. Uh, Governor Baker had emerged as a vocal critic of his response to the coronavirus pandemic, had supported his second impeachment. Uh, so it definitely would have been a factor in a Republican primary here. So now that the governor is not running, what do the prospects look like for a GOP candidate in Massachusetts who does openly support Donald Trump ahead of the 2022 election? Well, that is right now the sole candidate left standing um, because Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, perhaps even more surprisingly than Governor Charlie Baker, decided not to run for governor uh, when he bowed out. They are both out for 2022. And that leaves a Trump endorsed candidate, a conservative former state representative, Jeff Deal, as the sole Republican in the race right now. And again, that's something that seems to be like it will be good in a Republican primary here. It seems to be something that continues to energize the base and is currently dividing the Republican Party as a whole in Massachusetts. But again, candidates who have hewed too closely to uh, President Trump's message have not done well in statewide campaigns here when it comes to the general election. You know, the electorate here is still largely Democratic and independent and has not been a fan of President Donald Trump. And do we know of other potential contenders running for the vacating governor's seat? Yes, there are a few that are starting to be floated, at least right now. No one else has officially stepped in. So there are three Democrats who have been in the race for several months. Those are former state senator Ben Downing, current state senator Sonia Chang Diaz, and Daniel Allen, who's a Harvard professor um, and political um, operative. And she, um, they could now be joined by 
State Attorney General Maura Healey, who a Democrat who's in her second term as Attorney General, uh, she has long been considered, um, you know, a potential candidate this cycle, uh, the best chance to take on Governor Charlie Baker. And now that he's out of the way, the best chance to help the Democrats reclaim the corner office in Massachusetts. There are now also um, some speculation. Uh, Labor Secretary Marty Walsh is uh, making some calls, his allies are making some calls, testing the waters for a potential bid for him. He is, of course, the former Boston mayor. And on the Republican side, there are a couple candidates who are stepping up. One is a current mayor, Shauna O'Connell, and uh, she was a former state representative on the Massachusetts legislature as well. She's a Republican and U.S. attorney, former U.S. attorney, I should say, Andy Lelling, uh, who was a Trump appointee uh, for U.S. attorney for Massachusetts um, during President Trump's presidency. Wow, a lot of interesting dynamics to watch there, potentially on both sides of the aisle in that gubernatorial contest. Lisa Kaczynski, really good to have you. Thanks so much, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me.